Beneficent, the merciful, the one God, to whom all praise is due, the Lord of the world. We thank Allah over and over again for our beloved leader, teacher, and guide, the messenger of Allah, the exalted Christ, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. Before we begin our subject this afternoon, I would like to express my gratitude to all who made Savior's Day 1985 possible. Thanks to Allah and His Christ, without whose blessings of guidance and protection, none of this could be possible. Our heartfelt thanks to all of the laborers and followers of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, who have worked so hard throughout this past year to help us in this great work of redemption of our poor suffering people here and throughout the world. Our thanks and appreciation to all those business persons, friends and supporters who purchased an ad in our souvenir journal, making this journal the largest in our history and this Savior's Day beyond a doubt, the most successful of all in our rebuilding effort. Our thanks to all of the scholars, scientists, and strugglers for liberation from the Americas and throughout the world for your participation in this Savior's Day conference. Our thanks to the Savior's Day Advisory Board, comprised of members of the Chicago black community chaired by Dr. Anderson Thompson and convened by Miss Claudette Johnson. And our thanks to Sister Ava Muhammad for having coordinated this conference. A special thanks to Brother Ahmed Ben Bella for his contribution to this convention. And a special thanks to Brother Muammar Gaddafi for his words of encouragement and friendship and for his help in making it possible for this convention to be broadcast by satellite, making this the first time in history that a convention of black people is being made available to the people of the entire world. <laughs> Thanks to the American Indian brothers and to my brothers from the Masawa Indians in Mexico who presented me with such wonderful gift and expression and token of our love and our sincere friendship for one another. Never again in the future shall the black and the red be divided. We were one in the beginning and we are now one in the end. I must give a special thanks to my wife, to my mother, and to my family, without whose help and sacrifice and tireless efforts, the success of this day could not have been achieved. It's a wonderful thing when a man has a wife that backs him up and a mother who believes in him and children who stand with him. Lastly, our very special thanks to all of our platform guests and to each and every one of you who are here today. Without your presence and your support, this day could not have been possible 
may I say to you from the depth of my heart, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Now I notice that something is different today. You see my sisters standing around me. They are my support. They are soldiers willing at any time to give their lives for Allah's sake and righteousness. It is time that women all over the world are recognized for that which God has put in them for the whole world. All praise is due to Allah. Never again shall we walk with our women behind us Never again shall we permit women to be disrespected and dishonored in any society here or anywhere else on the earth. It is the time that Almighty God wants women to take their rightful place. And this is why this world is on its way to hell. It is because it has not respected the mother of civilization. To my right and your left is my oldest daughter, but she's a soldier from her heart. And around me are the vanguard of the MGT and GCC of Muhammad's temples of Islam throughout America. Brothers and sisters, I want you to just fasten your seat belts. I want you to Settle down, because we're about to take off. I want you to pay good attention to everything we say. Allah's manifestation and presence among us is to make us friends of each other and to make friends for us throughout the earth. The tragedy of our sojourn in America is that we were robbed of the most vital of all knowledge, the knowledge of self, making it virtually impossible for us to be friends of each other, which made us unable to make friends of our people around the globe. Today, Allah is changing this reality and making a new reality. Look around you. Look at what you see represented on this rostrum and in this audience. We are finding that it has become easier now for us as black people to befriend one another. And it is now easier for us to be befriended by others and this alone is increasing us in power. Allah, Almighty God, has brought this tiny nation of Islam a long way in this past seven years of our rebuilding effort. But before we go any further, we desire that you understand this terminology nation of Islam. All of you, my beloved brothers and sisters, as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad has taught us, are a part of the nation of Islam. And all of you are Muslims. Well, you may ask, what do you mean by that? I'm a Christian. What do you mean by that? I'm an agnostic. We know what you call yourselves. I'm only telling you who you are. Allah 
time and circumstances have made us into a nation. We have actually become a nation within a nation with a common heritage, a common history, a common language, a common suffering, and a common destiny. So we therefore must begin to see ourselves as a nation. We must begin to see ourselves as a whole people, not as the different factions or fragments of what we represent today. This fragmentation of us that the comparable to the tribalism that exists among the Africans and in the Americas among the Indians. No more tribalism. No more tribalism in Africa. No more tribalism among the American Indians. No more tribalism among black people in America. History teaches us that the Europeans did not become great and powerful until they outgrew tribalism and became nations linking themselves together with common purpose. So Indians, Africans, blacks of the Pacific, blacks in the Caribbean, blacks in America must outgrow tribalism and become one nation as we were in the beginning linking ourselves together with common purpose then we will have power at last and forever so so when we speak of the nation we are not speaking of this tiny group called muslims no we are speaking of the totality of our people. Nation of Islam means that we are members of the nation of righteousness. And we are being called upon today by Almighty God, Allah, to act on principles of right and justice and not to follow the destructive course of the nations of the earth. And when we say Muslim, we mean a people who are born to submit to the will of God. And every one of you in this auditorium is born with that nature if you are a member of the original people of the earth. Before me today are many people who will with right understanding and great effort become one nation. Christians, Muslims, Hebrews, nationalists, pan-Africanists, socialists, communists, every color and race will ultimately become one humanity. If we rightly understand and apply the principles of that man that is found in the Bible called Christ, and if we rightly understand and apply the principles of that man that is found in the Holy Quran called Muhammad, we can overcome the natural limitations of secular, national, and racial brotherhoods. Then we will become one great brotherhood. This is not a far-fetched idea. It is possible, and believe it or not, we are moving at a very fast pace, black brothers and sisters, Indian brothers and sisters toward becoming one nation, one people, and moving on to one great humanity. Have you considered the fact that we come to birth speaking the same language? Babies don't cry in Arabic, in Swahili, in Greek, in Hebrew, in Chinese or Japanese, we all utter the same sound when we come into the world. And from this common sound, we grow into the diversity of languages. However, at the point 
of our death. Again, all of us utter the same sound. In the beginning, we make one common sound. We move out into diversity of expression, and in the end, we return to a common sound. This is to teach us that we come from one source. We grow into diversity, and at some point in our development, we will move through this diversity and move away from this sense of alienation one from another and ultimately we shall become one. So the Christ of the Bible represents one faith, one Lord, one baptism. And the Muhammad of the Quran represents the oneness of God and the oneness of humanity. It is apparent to me that the Christ that the Christians look for to come and the Mahdi, Muhammad, that the Muslims are looking for to come are one and the same person and that person was not a man of yesterday. He's a man of today. So you should open your eyes and look for Christ and you should open your eyes and look for the Mahdi, Muhammad. They are present in the world and our presence bears witness to their presence. 100 years ago, in the city of Berlin, at the request of King Leopold of Belgium, a conference was called of the European nations. This conference lasted from November the 24th, 1884 to February the 26th, 1885. The purpose of this conference was to bring order to the chaos created by the greed of the European nations as they fought to master, dominate, and exploit the people and the riches of Africa. Here we are today, 100 years from that conference, and we are convening to end the effect of that conference by agreeing on solutions to the problems created by the Berlin Conference and all that led to that conference and to speed up the pace of our liberation here in Central America, South America, the Caribbean, Africa, the Isles of the Pacific. We are here to end European and Western domination of the darker people of the earth. Brother Gaddafi asked the question, what did you do, what sin did you commit in words that you were created by God black? We know we created, we made no sin. We are black because we are the original people of the earth and without our blackness, no other color could come into existence. We understand that today. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad has said to us that the black man has not had his day in 50,000 years. He also taught us that this last 6,000 years since the making and the emergence of the Caucasian race has witnessed the complete destruction of the black man. Today, however, we are at the turning point in history. We are at that point in history that is called in the Bible and Quran the resurrection of the dead and the judgment of the world. This resurrection is not referring to an actual dead people rising from any physical grave, but it is referring to the darker people of the earth coming back into the light of knowledge as the fathers of civilization which will enable us to unite and build a new and superior civilization. Now this resurrection also affects the Caucasian people. 
the Caucasian people are now dying under the weight of their own way of civilization. However, if the Caucasian people will accept that truth that God has revealed to resurrect us from moral and spiritual death, they too can become a part of this process of resurrection. In order for man and woman in general to be uplifted from our destructive fall, to achieve true liberation and freedom from that which keeps us from being resurrected to our glorious self, all of us need power. All of us need power. The red man needs power. The black man, the brown man needs power. Even the Caucasian on another level needs that kind of power that I'm talking about this afternoon. We need power, brothers and sisters, to liberate ourselves. And we must be liberated on three different levels. We must be liberated politically. We must be liberated economically and we must be liberated spiritually if we achieve political independence and we have not yet achieved economic independence then our political independence is an illusion however to achieve both political and economic power and yet not achieve power spiritually to liberate the human spirit is to endanger our political and economic progress for the spiritual bondage of sin renders us unable to secure economic and political gains so liberation then is not just a word of people shouting around the world we must be liberated we must be liberated no Liberation is a continuing universal struggle which embodies a principle out of which grows a law and a duty that is imposed upon each of us by our Creator. None of us is whole until we achieve the power to liberate ourselves on every level of human development. And at any point, that we stop in that process of liberation and resurrection before reaching the goal. Then the process of death begins. We begin to deteriorate, falling backwards, first into economic and political bondage because we are under the bondage of sin, which is the rebellion of self against divine will and law. The power that liberates the people of the earth politically, economically, and spiritually will bring us into a new world order. The old world is dying a natural death. The old world rulers are suffering under the weight of their own inadequacy to solve their problems produced by the injustice of their way of civilization. What is the source of this power that will allow us to liberate ourselves on all these levels of human development? The source of that power, my beloved brothers and sisters, comes from Allah and only from the almighty and wise creator. However, there are many of you who listen to me this afternoon who are not ready yet to agree with that. There are many who believe that the power to liberate comes from the barrel of a gun. Power is a force that enables us to achieve the ends of our will. Power enables us to do what we desire. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that this world worships the force of arms. Without a doubt, 
There is power in the weapons of war. And those who have the greater technology, the greater weaponry, can force their will on others so that they achieve their will at the expense of the will of others. So the force of arms may win for a moment, but in the long run, the will of the people to be free of an imposed force ultimately destroys the force of arms. The power that is found in the force of arms is sought by all the nations of the earth today, for all nations are now going into debt buying new and more modern weapons of war. All nations recognize that in a world mastered by greed, envy, and the desire for the domination of one nation over another, one must have the force of arms to repel the desire of others. So political independence in a world like this is at best an illusion. The black world, the third world, is oppressed on all levels. Third world nations have the illusion of political independence while they suffer from economic and spiritual bondage. No third world nation is actually free. It is a mockery of freedom to raise a flag and have independent celebrations when the raw materials under your foot are controlled by the imperialist powers of the world. The Western nations, with the mighty force of arms, look at their condition. They are humanly in bondage to such degree that their own weapons of war do not provide them with security. So they must waste their substance to make more and greater weapons of war, still not achieving security or contentment of mind. So the Western nations suffer from the bondage of the human spirit. And now the Western world, particularly America, England, and France, and Russia, they are losing political and economic power. Any people or nation that does not respect the power that liberates the human spirit dooms themselves to destruction, feeding upon themselves because the human spirit is dominated by avarice greed, envy, lust, and godlessness. So this teaches us that the economic and political power of this world cannot produce a world government. It is useless for the nations to meet in New York calling it the United Nations. You do not have the capacity to produce world government. That mantle is coming away from the nations of the earth and God is vesting that power in a new nation that is coming up in the West today. And I represent that power and that nation. Western world? What limits those who are caught under the strain of the ideological struggle between the East and the West? It is that these nations are not rooted in the third power, which is the power that liberates the human spirit. These nations make mockery of that third power. And it is this power 